What's my safety word? <laughs> no pain, no gain, Ross. Oh, is this because I didn't make eight miles yesterday? <laughs> What's up guys? I'm not even gonna lie, that was that was pretty brutal. That was probably the hardest part of the Great British Swim so far. Just three days of getting beaten up in the Bristol Channel. Um, the, the ocean completely flipped the rules on us. I was just getting slapped across the face. The tides were going this way and this way. Um, none of them actually helping me. And yeah, it was just it was just brutal. Never once have I thought, even in the roughest moments when my neck was bleeding, my tongue was falling apart, never once did I think I was going to quit ever. But the mindset is just about how can you make it easier or more enjoyable. That that's all I'm thinking. I'm not saying, oh, Ross, you gotta you gotta keep going because no, of course I'm going to keep going. Don't quit. I was like, no, no, I was never going to quit. And it was while I was asking myself these questions the Bristol Channel just went and delivered a giant minky whale. There it is, there it is. Oh, it's a massive minky whale right there. It's a whale, Ross. It's not a dolphin. Yeah, it's a whale, it's not a dolphin. He said it's the biggest one yet. It looks like it's right underneath Ross. There, oh my God. It's this one actually. Whoa, is there, is there? Whoa! Yeah, they're talking. Where? Oh shit, there's the whale, there's the whale. Ah. Wow! It's literally following Ross, the whale. Okay, hit the Bristol Channel, and as you know, zigzagging currents just basically slapping me either side of the face. And as a result, my shoulders were just basically contorting and twisting in a way that they have not been used to basically for the last the last month and if you don't address the problem now you know what could be a little sort of twinge a little niggly injury could quickly manifest itself into something where my shoulder just says no more great british swim you know my shoulders aren't going to be treated with uh, a little bit of aloe vera or a little bit of coconut oil um, or the luchador mask isn't going to help right now <laughs> make some phone calls and Jeff's rocking down. How are we doing? Hi, Ross. This is Jeff Rossi. Look at the size of his forearms. No! <laughs> oh, wow, that's tender. Ow. Oh. <laughs> My eyes are actually watering. I don't know how he's done it, but Jeff's managed to fit the treatment table in the in the kitchen. <laughs> this is amazing. Is this the weirdest place you've ever done physio, Jeff? I think I think it probably is now. <laughs> All right, this this is definitely not going to be pleasant, but every time Jeff visits, like I said, I do feel more mobile. Uh, I, I feel better. It's, it's it's like fingers crossed, touch wood. I'm basically going to have a new body after this MOT. I'll be like a jellyfish, just just yeah. like just, <laughs> like, yeah. like jellyfish. jellyfish. What's my safety word? <laughs> <laughs> No pain, no gain, Ross. Oh, is this because I didn't make eight miles yesterday? <laughs> this is my good one. <laughs> There's a place where flowers grow and bloom. And that's so bad. Oh. I don't know what he's done, but there are magic in those hench fingers of his. My shoulder's no longer making a funny noise. Um, I've got more mobility in my shoulder as well. Feels a little bit stronger. So because of that lack of mobility and range of motion when I was actually pulling, um, he's now actually kind of freed that up so I can start to generate more force through it. He's an absolute magician. I, I feel good and I've got new shoulders. I'm gonna be rapid. I'm gonna be coming at like six knots across the Irish Sea. It's... Eat my bubbles. <laughs> Eat my bubbles. Today marks the day that we head to Ireland. Across the Irish Sea. It's going to be a couple of days at sea, so this is the first time we've done a massive sea crossing. Um, so I'm excited, but also a little bit nervous. It's balancing this kind of conservative fatigue management injury prevention with you got to get across the Irish Sea before it gets a little bit choppy. 60 miles to across the Irish Sea, um, but there's a number of obstacles in the way, uh, mainly Cardigan Bay. As you come around Cardigan Bay, there's a chance that we might get swept in there. If I get caught in this, it, it will honestly add like, you know, maybe three weeks or something to it. Like it's, it's that bad. So here we are down here. Here's Cardigan Bay, which is what we're talking about, trying to avoid getting stuck in that bay. But a much more significant 
worry in terms of getting stuck is that further up you've got this huge area here which is uh, Morecambe Bay. If we end up on this side, on the Anglesey side, we're going to be going across the current rather than with or against the current, trying to avoid getting swept in there. And then this is a big area of swirling slack water here. At some point, with the weather's got to change, this can't last forever. So this kind of gives us a little bit of protection that if we're ever on this side, that um, potentially we can be in flat water on a, in a southwest gale, which would be great. swim we've had this morning he's um, just gone over the 15 mile mile it's 15.4 actually so he's nearly 15 and a half miles which is a massive massive distance he's covered already 16.2 or 16.3 was um, the previous best up to have got this close unexpectedly as well to have got this close to uh, all-time record you know if we can keep him in the water for another mile then that'd be amazing but the tide's just changing it's just gone into a kind of neutral zone now where it's making a bad swimming speed over the ground, which is um, means the tide's about to start rushing back out the other way. So just pick up another mile before the tide goes hard against him, and um, potentially will squeeze up above that previous best record, which is exciting. You know, if you've got the energy, then then do another mile, and you've broken the record and killed another bit of wet. One more hour, hopefully, and then um, he can break his record. <laughs> so guys we are somewhere across the Irish Sea not entirely sure where um, but we have come out of the blocks this morning the Irish Sea is notorious for its, for its weather tides and currents and um, we just seem to have a little bit of a stroke of luck if I'm honest so woke up this morning five o'clock eating breakfast and it was just calm and as a team we all just looked at each other and we were like this is an absolute gift so goggles on as quick as possible and I was just out there no one was expecting it, but and, and this is one thing that we've learnt on the Great British Swim. If the ocean decides to hand you a gift first thing in the morning, you don't question it, you take it. You put your goggles on and you swim and you swim hard. Shoulder is feeling good. I have no idea what Jeff did to it. He went to town on me for like three hours. But with my new mobile shoulders, it just it felt so good today. And also with the weather, everything decided to kind of come together which was which was really cool also Jeff gave me a little bit of homework to do as well so uh, built a home gym here on the boat boat gym and uh, that was really cool one just doing a lot of mobility work on the shoulder so those smaller intricate muscles that are so often overlooked but as well as that I also ended up using peonies it's kind of like a sandbag just because although it looked like we were just playing around it, it, what's so interesting is over a hundred days when you're doing like non weight bearing sports my joints my muscles you know they, they really aren't generating much force they're not really um, sort of combating gravity like you'd expect with most other sports like running or jumping so putting a little bit of, of weight a little bit of force through the body through the muscles again um, so that's why at the moment peony is just a, a willing sandbag and I'll just like lunge and, and sort of you know overhead press or, or do some uh, uh, peony press ups as we called them also as well I can confirm that the Irish Sea is definitely colder than the Bristol Channel I mean six hours is, is usually no problem whereas out there, I was, I was definitely feeling my face went numb. I, I was shouting for a banana. My lips are blue. It's so cold. It's so much colder. 
and I was just I was just dribbling as well. Like, I couldn't even put the banana in my face. We have got word on the radio that a hurricane is on the way. Hurricane Chris. <laughs> Uh, basically, it's in Mexico at the moment, tracking up north, so it's kind of heading towards Iceland. And there's very much a risk that we'll get the tail end of it. Um, being stuck in the Irish Sea when a hurricane, or even the tail end of a hurricane, is on the way, is, is probably not something I want to do. So the goal now is, although we set a Great British Swim record today, as always, you know, you celebrate, but you keep those celebrations very, very, very short. And then you look on and you make sure that you get across somewhere safe. And in this case, that safe haven is Ireland. So, celebration, keep it short, back in the game, back over to Ireland. So on that note, it's now time to get the uniform on, get to work and get to Ireland.